All right, and we're live all the way from Hako, Costa Rica. Okay, today's broadcast, man, we're going to be talking about why did the most popular tourist destination in all of Costa Rica flood? That's right, I am talking about Hako, Costa Rica flooding. I'm talking about bad flooding just a couple of days ago. Now, look, I know today we're going to have some really smart people on the call today. So I'm going to be giving you some questions. I'm going to be, I want to make you think, you know, questions like, okay, why did it flood in Hako? Hey, is it, uh, did the rain catch them off guard? It's like, you know, maybe this was a fluke. Maybe this was a one time unexpected rain or, hey, do the streets of Hako flood on a routine or regular basis, okay? And most importantly, most importantly, what can you learn from this tragic event and the flooding that happened in Hako, Costa Rica? For example, what happens and does your water go out in a flood? I mean, you got lots of water. So does the water go out in a flood? And hey, does the internet, wait a minute, does the internet go out in a flood? Alan, I think you're having too much apple juice. <laughs> And when is the best time to actually search for property to buy in Costa Rica? Now, you're probably thinking, now, what does that question have anything to do with the flood in Hako? Well, tune in and you'll find out more as we continue with this live broadcast. But first, hey, if you are seriously thinking about moving to Costa Rica, you know, there's a lot of challenges. If you're thinking about either buying property in Costa Rica, you're thinking about possibly uh, building a house in Costa Rica, man, there are a ton of challenges, a ton of things that could possibly go wrong. So I extremely encourage you to make sure that you schedule your free 20 minute phone consultation. The link is in the first comment or in the description below so that you can have a professional lead you, guide you, talk to you, help you with that process so that you can avoid making a ton of mistakes and hey, possibly avoid having your property flood. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So let's get after it. Okay. So, hey, you know, we're talking about why, why did Hako flood. I mean, look, we are talking about the most popular tourist destination in Costa Rica, in my opinion. Okay. Hako, I think, is one of the most marketed places out there. And so there's tons and tons of people here. And of course, I'm in Hako right now uh, as we speak. I'm about 10 minutes walk from the main strip. So you've got to ask yourself these questions. Because with as many tourists that come here, you would be thinking, okay, why does it flood? Okay, if they have lots of tourists here, wouldn't they do everything possible to make sure that it doesn't flood, that the place is safe for people? Okay, so keep that in mind while we back up just a little bit, because I want to talk about some popular tourist destinations in the United States, for example. I'm from Louisiana, grew up most of my life in Louisiana, uh, as a kid anyway, and growing up in Louisiana, there was a very popular beach that we used to all go to, and while Louisiana is on the Gulf of Mexico, we didn't have beautiful beaches, you know, like you might have on the Pacific, you know, on the Atlantic side, but we still had a really nice beach in the Gulf of Mexico, you know, the waters are usually muddy, but hey, it was the Gulf of Mexico, there's a lot of drilling rigs and oil rigs and stirred up the waters, but anyway, we would go to Holly Beach. Man, look, Holly Beach was a fun place to go. Holly Beach, you know, it had a bunch of little bitty rinky-dink cabins. And, hey, I don't know the history of it other than, you know, it's been there forever. And I think a lot of people just started building these little shacks. And it was a fun place to go. And Hako Beach just became one of those places you could go to. There was no highfalutin, fancy houses. Man, these were all little bitty run-down little shacks. But people went there, caught crawfish, boiled crawfish, uh, I mean, uh, crabs, shrimp, crawfish, had a great time. I mean, you just, there was no place funner. You could go swimming, have a good time, and it was great. But, but while we was there, lots of tourists, lots of people, the beach was always clean. Now, unfortunately, in 2005, 
Hurricane Rita came through there, and I'm talking about wiped it out, leveled the place. It was devastating. Not a single shack, not a pole, not a brick, nothing. Wiped it out, okay? Well, when it wiped it out, well, the government officials then came in with all the zoning laws and ordinances, and now if you go to Holly Beach, that place, wow, it's nothing but the, uh, the money. People with money built some fabulous homes there, zoning laws, all that. And now the beach is even cleaner than it was. And I don't know if it's still a tourist destination or not. Uh, haven't been there since they rebuilt it, but a beautiful place. Well, let's talk about another tourist destination uh, some people may know about. And that's Galveston Beach. It's still within the Gulf of Mexico, but even Galveston Beach, or if we talk about anywhere up and down the Florida coastline, right? Beautiful beaches, but all of those beaches, especially where there's tourists, Guess what? The municipality, the community, the city officials always, always. And you tell me, put it in the comments here. Let me know if this happens where you live at. In tourist areas, on that beach, always a tractor, at least once a week, but usually several times a week, a tractor would drive up and down that beach. And they had this huge thing. It was a rake. That's what it's called. This attachment on the back of the tractor had this huge rake and it would rake up all of the limbs and debris. And if there was any uh, logs that floated in, well, it would pick up those logs and take them all to one designated place where either they rotted or burned them. You know, but the the beach was immaculate all the time. Now, somebody help me out. Help me out. Put in the comment below. Why was it? Why did the city people clean those beaches quickly put the comment in there why did the city officials clean those beaches okay give me your input i would love to know what is your answer on that right obviously the reason that city officials cleaned those beaches was because if the beaches were clean you would get more tourists tourists would come in there and so the cleaner it was the better it was for tourists OK, and that happened over at Holly Beach. That happens at Galveston Beach. I'm sure it happens at most beaches. But you give me your input. Does that happen where you live at? OK. All right. So and, and so why is it I bring that up? Well, that brings up the question right here is, OK, Alan, well, how does that compare to Haco Beach? How does that compare to any beach in Costa Rica. Well, Haco Beach right now, if you go take a look at it, it is awful. I'm talking about terrible. There's logs, trees, debris, trash all over that place, okay? Now, it's worse than the normal right now. Obviously, it's more worse than the normal because of the recent flooding. But even though it's worse than the normal, what is the normal? Here's the normal. In Costa Rica, all of the beaches always have tons of debris, tons of logs, tons of trash. Well, now, I mean, back up. I'm going to take that back. Doesn't normally have tons of trash, but it does have trash. Okay. So what's the difference? Why is it the beaches in Costa Rica, especially beaches like Haco that generate thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people, why are they not clean like it happens in the United States or maybe in many other countries of the world? In many other cities, countries where there's lots of tourists, they always keep everything as clean and they do whatever they have to do to attract more tourists because common sense says the more tourists you can attract, the more money you can make, okay? So I'm going to give you that answer here in just a little bit. But before I do, let me ask you a couple more questions, okay? This is food for thought and how you can apply this to your life whenever you come to Costa Rica so that you can manage your expectations. I'm not saying that Costa Rica does it wrong, okay? I'm not saying the United States does it right. I'm just helping you to understand why it happens so that you can have a better understanding. Okay, so I just got a comment that says no video. Uh, 
are we are we live streaming? Is anybody else having any 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 problems? Let me know because I can see that there are like 18, 20 people on here. Let me know. Is the audio okay? Is the video okay? So I'm gonna continue while I'm waiting on some comments and feedback to come in. But I think we're doing okay. So anyway, first off, we need we need to say, well, okay, Alan. Because some of you may not know, why is it that the beaches are so full of debris, so full of logs and trash? And obviously here, in case you don't know, okay, obviously you got here in Hako and just about anywhere, you know, you're going to have mountains or streams or rivers, beaches that are flowing from the mountains and into the oceans. Okay, well, Anytime that it rains, especially if it rains hard, well, normally, you know, trees and logs and limbs, stuff falls into the river and it usually sits there. But during the rainy season in Costa Rica, you'll get a lot of rain. Well, when you get a lot of rain, then those rivers, those creeks, they flood and it just washes all of the trash, all of the debris, all of the mud, the rocks, the sand, the logs, all of that stuff goes rolling down the rivers and it hits the roads, clogs up drainages. Uh, it eventually makes its way out to the ocean and then the ocean drags it out and then pushes it right back up on the beach. And some of these logs are coming from miles and miles away. So that's where all of that trash, all of that debris ends up coming from when it's heavy floods, washes down the river, ends up in the ocean and the ocean spits it back out on the, on the beaches, okay? And so that's where a lot of that stuff actually comes from. So, and, and that's exactly what's happened in Hako. That's why there is so, so much garbage there, okay? Now, real quick question here. I'm still wondering, why did Hako flood? It's a touristy area. And so we need to ask the question, well, does Hako have proper drainage, you know? Or, or is it they just don't have drainage, okay? Uh, well, does Hako have proper drainage? Some say that, well, there's a lot of new construction going on right now in Hako, and they don't have proper drainage, okay? But if they do have drainage, is the drainage blocked or is it clogged? Well, I just watched a video that was aired recently within a few weeks by the mayor of Hako. And in the interview, they asked him a whole lot of things, you know, because, hey, the truth of the matter is that Hako floods all the time. Now, it doesn't flood as bad as it flooded just a few days ago, but almost every time it rains, the streets are flooded with, you know, three or four inches of water. And so that should not happen. OK, so number one is if the city has proper drainage, all of that water is supposed to flow into the drainage and your streets would not flood. However, Hako does have drainage. However, the mayor himself said, well, all of our drainage and all of our pipes are all clogged up. And he actually blamed it on the fact that there's com com uh, condominiums, there's hotels and they're dumping their garbage into the sewers. Now, is that true? I don't know. He's saying they should be using their own uh, sewer systems and treatment plants, but they don't. Well, that's an excuse. If you're the mayor of, of, of Hako, then if these condominiums and these new builds are not using your own treatment plants, then it's up to you to enforce it, right? So that's an excuse as to why Hako is flooding. If you're the governing official over your city, then enforce the laws, make them use their own treatment plants, make them inspection. That's what it's called. OK, well, then if that's not happening, well, why isn't it happening? I'm not saying this is happening, but this is what a lot of people say. And this is what I hear. The reason that that new condominiums, the reason that a lot of things happen and the mayor himself says they're not putting in the proper drainage is because the inspectors that go there are turning a blind eye because they're getting paid a bribe. In other words, it's the corruption. And that happens a lot in Costa Rica. While there is a lot of corruption, if there's huge condominiums, 
huge developments. And if they don't want to spend the proper amount of money doing it right, then guess what? All they got to do is pay the inspector a bribe. He turns a blind eye and that causes his problem. Well, if that is an actual problem, then it's up to the, the uh, city officials to rectify it by putting in penalties if you're not going to do it correctly. So in my opinion, that is nothing more than an excuse. OK, so if I was the mayor of Costa Rica, I would be doing everything I can to attract tourism. Don't you think that if I was the mayor of Costa Rica or, and, and anybody, I think, would say, well, hey, let's buy a tractor. Let's buy a rake. Let's employ people to clean up the beaches every day because right now there's people that are on the beaches. Nobody is going to the beach because it is so filthy and lots of people are complaining. And I'm, when I say lots of people, not just the tourists, but the Ticos themselves are complaining. What are you doing about this mess? Why aren't you cleaning it up? OK. And nobody is cleaning it up. OK. Well, why aren't they cleaning it up? I'm going to give you that answer in just a little bit. OK. So that kind of tells you, yeah, the mayor himself saying that the drainage is blocked and it's all clogged up. He's actually put in a quest that it cleaned up. But the answer is, OK, we're going to clean it up. But, you know, we won't have time to do it for five years. Well, how about getting your own people to, to do it? OK. Anyway, there's a lot of uh, craziness about all of that. So he, here's the facts. OK. I asked that question. Were they taken by surprise? Was it a fluke? Well, no, it wasn't taken by surprise. <laughs> I was talking to my neighbor as we were talking about this, and I asked her, I said, hey, do you think uh, the mayor, do you think Costa Rica was taken by surprise and all of a sudden it flooded? She's like, well, no, where I lived at, you know, they always said we had this surprise snowstorm in December. Wait a minute. What's surprise about that? You know that every December where you live at, it's going to snow. That's no surprise. Well, it's the same thing in Costa Rica. Guess what? In Costa Rica, for most parts of Costa Rica, every single year, you get six months of rain, six months of, of dry season. Did it take them by surprise? No, it didn't, right? Now, we are in October, and we are at the heaviest part of the rainy season, okay? So, yeah, they got more rain than the usual, and it was a pretty heavy storm, but it didn't take them by surprise. Since it floods all the time, then it's up to the city officials to actually clean it out so that tourists are safe. Uh, it's going to boost the economy and all of that. So let's talk about rainy season for just a moment, because I know some people are questioning. Well, it doesn't rain six months out of the year. And keep in mind, I'm giving you my perspective. I've been all over Costa Rica and in most of Costa Rica, it rains six months out of the year and usually rainy season will begin raining in May and it will uh, end toward the end of October or beginning of November. So from May to October is normally rainy season and it's only a lot, a lot, a lot of rain in the last month or two of rainy season. It, it begins to stop raining in November. So the dry season begins, you know, at the beginning of November toward April. And that's when the high season or the busiest tourist season begins usually in December. And you have lots of people coming, OK, during that time. So uh, that is the most part, obviously, depending on where you live at. And some people argue with me, no, rainy season is three months out of the year. Well, depending on where you're at, it might be three months because keep in mind, Costa Rica has like 12 different ecosystems. And so in some places, it may rain more out of the year than in others. But guess what? Guess what? And for the most part, it's going to be that way. So that's just to give you an idea. Over on the Caribbean side, well, yes, on the Caribbean side, guess what? Caribbean side, you don't have a rainy season and a dry season. On the Caribbean side, you have a more, more uh, typical, uh, typical weather, weather pattern. pattern. Uh, uh, and so let me show you. I'm going to go into uh, – let me, let me share my screen with you real quick so that you have a better understanding. Let me come over here, and I think right here, let me share my screen. And I want to show with you, okay – Let me bring this over here. All right, so you should be able to see my screen, and this will help give you a better understanding of the actual 
weather and why the weather is like it is. So here we are right here in Costa Rica. Well, you have all of the Pacific right here, and this Pacific right here is what determines the weather pattern coming on the Pacific side of Costa Rica, okay? Well, on the Lemoyne side, why is it so tremendously different? Well, going right down the center of Costa Rica, and the center of Costa Rica is this huge peak. It goes all the way across, and it's a really tall mountain range. And so the, the clouds and the weather that goes this way, they pretty much stop at that peak. Well, you have on the Lemoyne side, if I make this smaller, well, you have the Caribbean Sea right here, okay? And all of this water is usually a lot smaller because Cuba, uh, Haiti, Puerto Rico, it kind of blocks all of the water from the Atlantic side. It doesn't come into this portion right here. And so the weather pattern on the Lemoyne side is more like it is over in the United States. So the weather that comes on the Lemoyne side, it gets its clouds, weather, all of that comes from the Caribbean Sea, and it has a more normal where it will, it's dry a few days, get a little rain, dry a few days, get a little rain. And so hopefully that kind of helps you to understand why there's such a huge difference in the weather pattern in Costa Rica. So you just split Costa Rica right down the center. And if you go from the center out to the Pacific, you can expect it to rain six months out of the year, six months dry. But over on the local Caribbean side, it is going to be different. OK, so I'm going to go back to my screen and. Um, let me. Well, I hope I actually shared that screen. Did I share that screen? <laughs> I hope I was showing you the screen. OK, uh, so anyway, I. Uh, I'm not sure, but I, I hope it showed the screen, but I think I did. Anyway, if I didn't, I hope I hate you missed out. Anyway, so let's talk about, let me go back to my notes here. Okay, and look, remember, put your questions in here because I'm going to be sure to answer every single question, okay, before we end. And as always, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to address all the questions about what we're talking about, and then I'll answer any question and every question about everything else. Okay, Steve Brewer said, no, I did. They, they did not see the screen. Okay, well, I hope you, I hope you pictured it in there. See, I messed up. I thought I was sharing the screen. <laughs> Maybe I should go back and do that again, huh? All right, so sorry about that. I goofed. No screen on my end, so y'all just continued watching me. Anyway, fantastic. Okay. So, uh, so anyway, that gives you a really good explanation of, of the rainy season and the dry season and why it is what it is, okay? Now, let's go back and let me give you the answer, okay? Because I've been teasing you long enough. And this is my answer, my answer as to why it flooded in the most popular tourist destination in Costa Rica. Are you ready? Can we get a drum roll? The reason it flooded in the most popular tourist destination is because of the Puerto Vida mentality. That's why it flooded. Wait a minute. Some of you are like, what do you mean? Well, first, if you're new to this and you don't know what the Purta Vida mentality means, well, what does Purta Vida mean? Well, literally, it means pure life. But Purta Vida is probably the most popular word in Costa Rica. And look, uh, when you greet someone and you say hello, Purta Vida is the answer. When you get ready to leave somebody and you're like, see you later, Purta Vida. Uh, you, know, hey, you know, you're talking to somebody and, and you're explaining something. Oh, no worries. Purta Vida. Uh, you bump into somebody and you say, excuse me, Purta Vida might be the answer. You know, hey, how are you doing? Purta Vida. Thank you. Purta Vida. You know, the ugliest, you know, Purta Vida has a lot of meanings. The ugliest expression of Purta Vida is, here's an example, and it happens to me all the time. Atiko parks in my driveway. I'm trying to leave. I'm in a hurry. The Tico's parked in my driveway. I can't get out. Now I got to go chase, chase him down. I got to find him in the store. I'm like, you got to move your car out of my driveway. Why did you park in my driveway? And the tickle's like, Purta Vida. Well, that's the most vile expression of the word Purta Vida. 
It just means F you. I don't care. I parked in your driveway because I simply don't care. It's the Purita mentality. Okay. I've been here for nine years. And, uh, you know, when people find out, oh, man, you've been in Costa Rica for nine years, you must uh, you must just love the Pura Vida lifestyle. I hate the Pura Vida lifestyle. Now, I got nothing against people who love the Pura Vida lifestyle. A lot of people come to Costa Rica because they want that laid back lifestyle. But to me, that Pura Vida lifestyle simply means I don't care. And so it's nothing wrong with it, but you have to understand the culture. They're laid back. And you know what? When their toilet breaks and, and you know, they can go spend three dollars to get a new handle. They don't. They put a string in there and you pull the string to flush it. Put a Vita. It works. So it's the whole mentality. Why is it the beach is not cleaned up? Put a Vita. It's normal. It's normal. It's natural. Why clean up the beach? It's just a stick. It will eventually float out. Maybe a few people will make some bonfires and they'll burn up the trash. Hey, we're so glad that the ocean brought these sticks in here. So now our tourists can build a fire on the beach. It's the Pura Vida mentality. Okay. They don't think anything is wrong with it. And they don't think that maybe we should clean up the beach so that we can attract more people. You know, the beaches are terribly, terribly dirty right now, but they're like, well, Pura Vida, it'll eventually rot away. The beaches will eventually get cleaned up. Somebody will do it. So understand it's the Pura Vida mentality is why it flooded in Costa Rica. That's why it flooded because well, it's raining. It's normal. You're going to have water on the street. Well, nobody wants to be the one to go do what needs to be done in order to fix it, okay? And so they've got the drainage. It's clogged up. Well, spend the money and fix it, okay? This is what corruption says. Corruption says, well, if I spend the money to fix the drainage, I've got less money to put in my back pocket. I'm not saying that's what's happening. I'm saying that does happen, okay? And that's why a lot of things don't happen in Costa Rica. So I'm telling you all this stuff. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just telling you so you can, can uh, monitor your expectations. So how is this going to affect you? Because I'm here in, uh, this is the first place that I, I came to when I came out here to this uh, assignment. And this is a great little place right here. And I came here because where I was living at, or still living at, well, it flooded and the water went out. Wait a minute. Why did the water go out? Well, once again, you need to understand that you're in Costa Rica. And a lot of places are getting their waters from the rivers. And like I said, remember, when it rains and all those logs and sticks are going down the river and to the roads, within well, those logs hit water lines, bust the water lines. Now we don't have water going to where I was living at. And the water was out for five days. Well, why was the water out for five days? Pura Vida. You see, Costa Ricans don't think twice about, well, look, if the water's out, go down to the river and take a bath. The Costa Ricans, they have a Pura Vida mentality, and they're not thinking about how important it is to have water. So what can you do when water goes out at your place? Well, I've done a video on that before on my channel, and that is to actually set up your own water tank. So whether you're renting or whether you're buying and you're building. Now, if you're renting, that's an added expense, but you don't have to have it's not a lot to build a little bitty tower and have a 55 gallon drum, you know, a tank so that when the water does go out where you're not like me, where, hey, here I am on this temporary assignment. I've got no water and nobody's checking to see, you know, no one is checking on their tenant to say, Hey, I know you're renting from us. Are you okay? Is everything? No, no, no. Ticos don't think that away. Okay. It's the Pura Vida mentality. Okay. It's Pura Vida, man. The water is out. How long is the water going to be out? Pura Vida. It's the Pura Vida mentality. It's laid back. And hey, that's okay. And if you like that, hey, that's great. Okay. But for me, that's just not my, my mentality. My mentality is if I can't do it right, I'm not going to do it all. Okay. If my toilet breaks, 
then I'm going to buy a new handle. Okay. I'm going to do it right. But that's not the Pura Vida mentality. The Pura Vida mentality is, is it functional? Does it still work? I put a string in it. It doesn't work. Yeah. See, pull the handle. It works. So you have to understand it's a cultural thing and that's okay. I'm not judging and, and you have to understand that when you come here, you're not going to change it. Costa Rica has always been that way and will forever be that way. So you come to Costa Rica not because of the Pura Vida mentality. You come here because you want the nature or you want the, to relax. You've been moving too fast. It's a totally different atmosphere. And so that's what you need to learn. OK, so, hey, the other one is does the Internet go out when it when it floods? Yeah, where I'm at now, thank goodness we have good internet. But for the first few days, uh, it rained so much, and I just don't know if the internet lines got clogged up. I don't know what happened, but guess what? The internet would work 15 minutes, go off. Come back on, work 15 minutes, go off. I think after the lines dried up, then it started working okay. Hey, I don't know, but what I do know is that in Costa Rica, they tend to not fix anything unless it breaks down completely. So the Pura Vida mindset is they are reactive, not proactive. They can see the road is about to wash out. They can see a giant hole in the road. And so what do they do? They will take a branch from a tree, stick it in the hole so that it's a flag letting you know, hey, there's a hole in the road. Well, why not let's fix the hole? Because it's not broke. You see, it's a different mentality, and it's important you understand that, okay? So it's it's totally crazy, but it happens, okay? So, you know, here's something that's really important. So the most important thing, and hey, give me some feedback, because I see we got like 29 people here, and while you're here, if you haven't already liked, it's a huge, huge help for my channel if you'll hit that like button. Put in those comments. Be engaging. It really, really, really does help. So here's a real, real important question for you. If you're serious about coming to Costa Rica and you're thinking about buying property, give me some answers. When is the best time to actually look for property to buy in Costa Rica? Should you come in the winter time during the six months of rain and have to walk through all that rain or should you come during the six months of the dry season to look for property to buy in costa rica okay go ahead and put your answers down here i'm not going to say anything till i get some answers give me your input when's the best time to actually research find property to buy in costa rica give me your answer Lots of lot of engagement that's going on. Give me your answer. When is the best time to buy property or research property in Costa Rica? Once you find it, you can buy it anytime. But when is the best time to actually look for property to buy in Costa Rica? All right, are you ready? The best time to actually find property or research property in Costa Rica is during the rainy season. In my opinion, the best time to actually look for that property is in the last two months of the rainy season. So I would suggest you coming September, October, when the heaviest rains are, so that you can then look at the property. And your next question should be, well, why? Because you don't know how many people have come here during the summer when it's nice and dry and it's beautiful weather and they're laying out on the beach. Oh, I can't wait to get on our property. They buy the property. They build on the property. Okay. And then come rainy season or they come back during the rainy season and they're driving to their property. They get down to that low spot. Well, that low spot's not a low spot no more. It's a river. And it's a river for six months out of the year because during that low spot, that's where all the water drains and you need a four by four to get to your property. Or you bought a piece of property that now floods a whole lot because, you know, it was beautiful when you was there. 
you know, and guess what? There was a, a Tico house next to you. But what you didn't know is that that Tico house floods six months out of the year. So it's very, very important. If you're going to buy a piece of property, well, come during the rainy season, come the last two months, three months of rainy season, so that you, when it's raining the hardest, this way you can see, even if your house is on a hill, if your house is on a hill, you want to know, does the property above you, is it running onto your property? You know, is it going to, when you build a house, are you going to be creating a dam when you build your house? Because everything above you is flooding and, and coming on your property. So those are extremely important things to understand and things for you to realize when it comes time to building your property. So does that make sense? Okay. That makes sense. Hit that like button. Give me a comment, okay? So let me take time right now to go through some of these questions, okay, and answer some of these questions right here, okay? And uh, for the folks that are live today, like Steve, if you want to ask your questions live, hey, put your hand up so that I know. That way I can unmute your mic and I can be sure to allow you to answer your question live if you want, okay? So I'm going to take a look at some of the questions here and answer some of these, but you go ahead and put your question in the comment. Okay. Okay. So, uh, all right. So, of course, now one here, Steve says, hey, uh, uh, the host keeps muting my mic and, and the muting the mic so that we don't get any feedback. Okay. So I'll unmute your mic so that you can actually talk. But when the mic is open, well, then I get feedback and that way, so anyway, that's why it's muted, okay? All right. So let me take a look at some of these questions right here. So please let me know if you've got a, a question so that you, if you want to ask live, I love live participation, okay? Hey, uh, Lewis, uh, uh, here's a question. Guess what? Lewis says, Steve, do you live in Costa Rica too? <laughs> I, that's a question directly for you, Steve. I can't answer that question. Do you live? <laughs> So there you go. And uh, hey, Lewis says it all makes sense to him. So that's good. Okay. And, and of course, Bruce right here says, hey, that was a trick question. But yes, indeed, I would want to know if the property is flooding during rainy season. So, yep, Bruce, now you know the best time to look. And Doug got that answer correct. Yep, that's right. The best time to actually research property in Costa Rica is during the rainy season. Okay. And, and look, I'm, I'm glad that uh, Doug brought this up because Doug says, hey, there is no DOT program for roads, you know. Uh, they see it uh, and they see that there's problems and they see there's holes. But, you know, Doug, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, in the United States, you know, like you said, there's we got a DOT program or we've got a city officials, you know, uh, and the city officials are driving up down the street. And so they will uh, let their supervisors know, well, hey, look, there's a road, there's a big old hole developing in the middle of the highway. And report it, and then that gets fixed right away. When well, Costa Rica, like Doug said, there is no DOT program, there is nobody, and so even though the mayor could drive right by this giant hole, he's not going to do anything about it. Why? Because if he fixes the road, that's less money that goes in his pocket. Okay, or maybe there's too much paperwork, maybe there's too much blue tape, maybe he don't care. I don't know the answer to that. Okay, so anyway, but that's, I'm glad you brought that up. Now, hey, Lewis asked a really great question. Lewis says, does Costa Rica have good water filtration systems for residential homes? Um, well, guess what? That's a yes and no. There are a lot of homes in Costa Rica that's getting their water directly from the river, okay? And they may or may not have any kind of filtration system and may not have any kind of uh, chemicals cleaning it. Now, obviously, in some places... Uh, they do. I, I know that I was in one place. I want to say it was somewhere in, I think it was in San Vito. Uh, their water was coming from the river, but it went into a tank where they treated it first. And then, uh, so sometimes the water had an odor and stunk because of the treatment or whatever. Okay. So the best thing to do when you're coming to Costa Rica is to make sure you put a filtration system on your water line 
before it comes into the house. Now, what I will say is that the majority of the places that I've lived at, the water has always been very, very clean. I've lived in, I think, 13, 14 houses since I've been here since 2013. The majority of the places, the water was just great. OK, keep in mind, I've always lived mostly in rural places and not in cities. But there have been a couple of places where the water was like, yeah. And, you know, I filtered my water. OK, most places, the water in Costa Rica is very, very clean. Keep in mind, I've always lived in this in the mountains. And so if you live closer to the beach, you get the less clean it is. OK, because remember, everything up hills got to roll downhill. So all trash goes downhill. And uh, Doug says, those beach towns let the storm water run into those little streams and rivers. Uh, thus, when it washes up, you get dirty brown beaches instead of nice sand. And I don't recall seeing a sewer plant anywhere in Costa Rica. Uh, well, there's a lot of truth to that. There is one sewer plant that I saw, or sewer pond, sewer treatment plant, that was over in San Isidro. They have a huge sewer treatment pond that's probably... I don't know, two or three acres. It's all on a couple of hectares, okay? So they do have a sewer treatment plant in San Isidro, but it is the only one that I have seen, okay? Now, Lewis says something that I don't agree with, but hey, that's okay. He says, Costa Rica is considered a developed country. Is it lacking funding, corruption, civil engineers with no adequate knowledge? What's the problem? So Costa Rica, number one, is not, and, and maybe you were guessing, Costa Rica is not a developed country. Costa Rica is still considered a third world country, which really only means that it is a less developed country. It doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean you got pot kids running around starving to death like an Ethiopia or something like that. But Costa Rica is a third world country, which simply means it's less developed than it is in the United States. So their infrastructure, the roads, the water. And, and look, I think a lot of it just has to do of lack of adequate knowledge in the majority of the towns that I've lived in. OK, the, the water just goes off and it will be off for hours and it never fails. I'll go for a run that morning. I'm stinky and sweaty, ready to take a shower. The water is off. And it's going to be off all day, only to find out it's because, oh, they're building a new house down the street. So they turn the water off to the whole town to put in one meter. And since it's the Puerto Vida mentality, it's like, ah, Puerto Vida, what's the hurry? They're digging the hole by hand and there's no hurry. They're not worried that the stores and the people don't have water, can't take Puerto Vida. You know, it's a different mentality. Now, in the United States, when they develop a town, they've got several cutoffs, a lot of different cutoffs. So they can cut off the water in only section uh, Z to, to Q. You know, they can cut off sections and that way the whole town's not cut off. Not in Costa Rica. The whole town is cut off because they put in one shutoff. Now, that don't make no sense to me. It's the Pura Vida mentality or it's simply they just don't have adequate knowledge. OK. And I really think that is they just don't have the experience that more developed countries have. OK. So I'm not saying bad or good. I'm just saying and I'm, I'm teaching you the knowledge I have, because, look, um, I've been here nine years. There's a ton of things I don't like, but I'm still here. Why? Because I absolutely love living in Costa Rica. And I'd say this all the time, day in and day out. If you can control your environment, you can truly enjoy your slice of paradise. But when you're renting and you live right next door to a Tico and you can literally spit on the house next to you, well, guess what? You can't complain because he's got five dogs that bark all night. You can't complain because he's got uh, chickens that crow all day long and all night. You know, you can't complain because his daughter turned 15 and now they decide they're going to have a party every Friday night and they turn up the music, crank it up. Why? Let's help out the gringo. And that way he don't have to play his music. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. <laughs> it's the Puerto Vida mentality. OK, it's different. OK. So anyway, uh, it's just part of being in Costa Rica. OK, so let me come down here because I see there's some new comments has come in. And. Um, uh, 
All right. So, hey, this is a good question here. RT says, well, this sparks the question, what areas in Costa Rica have the best elevation considering landslides, rivers, floods, climate? Hey, I, I've said this a whole lot and I've been almost everywhere in Costa Rica. Uh, my favorite place and the place you're looking for would be anywhere in the Paris Zeladon region. San Isidro being the center of the Paris Zeladon region. Look up San Isidro, Paris Zeladon. Of course, I've done several videos on it. Great place because the elevation is up high. And while there are some areas that will flood there, most of the places don't flood. But do they have drainage problem? Yes, they have drainage problem as well. Every place in Costa Rica does, okay? But for the most part, with the elevations, the landslides, uh, what you're saying, the climate, Paris Zeladon area is top notch, okay? Love that place. And uh, so Pauline asked, does, uh, I can't pronounce this, it looks like Parkeria has flooding. Uh, what is the water department in Parker, Park, Park area, electric department called? Can you build a watershed without permission? So, hey, uh, good questions there. I don't know what area you're talking about. And Costa Rica often has uh, towns with the same names. So you would have to actually, you know, in other words, just like I said, because there's more than one San Isidro, but there's only one San Isidro Paris, Paris Zeladon area. So I don't know where that particular place is, but hey, you can go to Google and you can type in that. But, uh, and, and as far as putting in a watershed, uh, you know, if you're going to put up a tower, yep, you can easily put up a tower. And you don't see a lot of them in Costa Rica uh, because, hey, Tico's are poor. They don't have the money to put up a little water tower in a tank. But, yep, you can easily put up a water tower in a tank uh, easily. It does not cost a lot of money. And you can do that without any kind of permission, okay? Okay, here's a, uh, a good question. But, Greg, it says, how do you keep clothes from getting moldy during the rainy season? I heard that putting cat litter in the closet helps and uh, having a good dehumidifier with plenty of ventilation. So number one, if you got anything that you're worried about being moldy, you need a good dehumidifier, okay? Put a dehumidifier in there, it won't mold. Otherwise, look, my good leather boots, leather jackets, leather anything, it's going to mold uh, in, the, in the rainy season, okay? So unless you just have good ventilation, it is going to mold. So if you're worried about anything molding, you're going to have to have a closed up room with a dehumidifier. That way you don't have to worry about mold. A lot of people will use a dehumidifier if they, uh, or a room with a dehumidifier if they live close to the beach. Because if you live close to the beach and you got soft air coming into your house, that is the fastest way to damage your computer, damage your laptop, phones. So you want those items to be spending the night inside a room with a dehumidifier, okay? All right, so I'm taking a look at some of these questions. And look, if I haven't addressed your question, be sure to put it in there. And Bruce puts in a, a good comment. He says, push comes to shove. It's generally better to build at an elevation. And what is the police presence security in smaller towns? So, yeah, and I've talked about the police presence before because you generally, well, you really have three main types of police. Uh, the first type is what I call the presence police, okay? And they're the ones that drive around, and uh, they're just there for presence, okay? And their lights are almost always on. You have the second type of police, and that's the traffic police. These are the ones, there's not a whole lot of them, but they're the ones that's monitoring the traffic. They're the ones that actually give tickets because the presence police, they don't give tickets. They can't give tickets. The only one that can give tickets are the traffic police. And then you got the third police. It's kind of like... It's kind of like the FBI. I think they're called the OJH or something like that. I may have the initials wrong. If you know the initials put in there, I think it's the OIJ, something like that. But anyway, they're kind of like the crime scene investigators, you know, okay, FBI or, you know, anyway. Uh, so you have those three and you don't even see that third one very much. But the traffic police, you see a whole lot. And they're the ones that's going to give you a ticket, even though I've never gotten a speeding ticket here because they don't, most of them don't have 
a radar, but I'm beginning to see that coming about. So, hey, even though it's a less developed country, they're becoming more and more and more developed. The presence place, they're all over Costa Rica, but they practically do nothing. Their whole point is presence. If they see people uh, fighting, if they see something that looks bad, they might stop and investigate it. If they're driving along the park and two or three kids are smoking dope in the park, smoking marijuana, they're not going to stop. They're just going to keep right on going. Buda Vida. <laughs> so, you know, it's the presence police. They're there and their lights are on and, you know, they're, they're really there just to stop a problem or they get a call saying, look for uh, this bald-headed gringo with a black shirt. He just stole something, okay? That's what the presence police is for, just for presence, because that's enough to intimidate and to stop a lot of theft, okay? And uh, RT Production says, I'm glad that there's groups like the HACO Impact and other organizations that help out. And absolutely, there are some small groups, you know, and not in every town, but HACO, I think simply because there's a lot of tourists here, a lot of Gringles that live here, I, I think they're some of the ones that actually initiate and help develop these groups. And so you got groups that are actually helping one another, which is really great, okay? And uh, hey, Doug has a great question here and says, how is the rain flooding affecting the house bill? And of course, you just watched the video or I hope you watched the video today where I gave you an update on the house bill situation. And of course, the rains have slowed us down. The flooding, well, we're not having any flooding whatsoever where we're at, okay, uh, because we're on a hillside and there is no flooding right there, which is great. And, and even though we're on a hillside, we're almost at the very top of the hill. So there's nothing coming from above us down. Uh, so anyway, uh, the house building is slow simply because toward October, you have most of the day where it's raining and it's hard to, especially right now, we're putting up this metal structure. They're trying to weld. Well, you can't weld in the rain. So, hey, water <laughs> welding and rain don't mix. So anyway, it has slowed down the process. But hopefully in another day or two, I'll have another update on the house build. So that has been a lot, a lot of fun to do that, okay? So, hey, um, coming down here. Um, and uh, pa Pauline asked a... Uh, a good question here and says, do the government officials speak English? Hardly ever. OK, now I'm sure there are some government officials that speak English. But look, uh, I'm glad you asked that question because a lot of people say, oh, man. And, and look, the people that say this are people that have come to Costa Rica as a tourist. You don't need to know Spanish. Everybody in Costa Rica talks English. Well, those are the knuckleheads. The only place they went was to the tourist area. Because I've been all over Costa Rica, and the majority of them do not know English. I don't expect them to know English. I always apologize for not knowing Spanish better than I do, okay? But yes, in the touristy area, there are more people that know English, and they're learning English because they're dealing with gringos and foreigners all the time. But the majority of the people do not know English. And do you need to know Spanish before coming here? No. I didn't know a single word before coming here. My Spanish is still horrible because guess what? I spend more time talking to you guys and you guys ain't talking Spanish to me. <laughs> so I still don't know Spanish, but hey, I'm learning all the time and I'm practicing. So no, I uh, hate to say it, Pauline, but most government officials do not know English, okay? And uh, Greg asked a question here. It says, hey, hadn't seen your wife in any of the videos lately. Is she okay? Hey, if you want to forget the updates on my awesome and wonderful, beautiful uh, Rebecca, all you got to do is join the members only area to get updates on Rebecca. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So Doug says, oh, well, I think Doug was actually asking a question. Is Par Parkeria, is, is that where the ferry lands across the Nicoya? Yeah, that's a good question. I have no clue. So that would be a question for you, Pauline, but I don't know if Pauline, you know, so anyway, uh, so there you go. Doug says it, Parkera, Parkera. Hey, thanks for that help, Doug. So Parkera, he says. So anyway, you'd have to do a little bit of search to find out because I really have no clue where that's at. Okay. All right. <laughs> Look, Doug's like, I'm going to help you out. 
He says, since you said nobody talks to you in Spanish, hola, como esta? <laughs> Doug's a comedian. <laughs> I don't know. You might want to keep your day job, Doug. So anyway, fantastic. All right. So, uh, all right, great. So, hey, what other questions do we have? As always, we've been here about an, an hour. And uh, hey, this is a this is a here's a question. When the when Purta, when the Purta Vida became the most used phrase in Costa Rica. The chilling way of living. Uh, I think he's asking, when did it? I don't know. Uh, I think Costa Rica has always said Puerto Vida. I was doing research on that today. And uh, some say it came from some movie a long time ago. Uh, but anyway, I don't have a true deal on that. But uh, what most of the articles have said is that ever since Costa Rica has been here, they have always used the word Puerto Vida, Puerto Vida, Puerto Vida. And uh, hey, Bruce had a good question here or comment says, the more you master Spanish, the less ripped off you will be. I agree with that 100%, Bruce. I'm so glad you put that in there because I have been ripped off a ton. And I always accept responsibility for being ripped off because I realize that if I understood Spanish better, then I would be able to hear what's going on. And I often said, I wished I knew Spanish and I would pretend like I don't know Spanish so I can hear you talking about how you're going to rip me off because <laughs> that gringo don't know Spanish because that happens. OK, so anyway, it's a good incentive to it, it. It's very, very helpful for you to actually learn the language, because the more you learn it, the better you're going to be able to get anything done. Uh, my life is is miserable when I have to go to the bank or go somewhere. But hey, I'm practicing every day and I'm learning a little more and a little more and a little more. I'm always trying to learn so that I can become better. Uh, hey, if you know Spanish, it does make life a whole lot easier. OK. All right. So, hey, any other questions, any other comments? Uh, give me your feedback. I hope, hey, let me know, you know, on a scale of one to 10, put in there, uh, was this very beneficial for you or not? Is the information I'm giving you on today's live show, is this beneficial for you? Because, you know, I, you know, I want to try to do some of these live shows every Sunday. But at the same time, I need your input. You know, tell me, what do you want to know? Hey, send me, if you haven't already joined my newsletter, you should join the newsletter so that you can send me an email and say, hey, Alan, I would like for you to talk about what's the toilet paper situation? Why is it I can't flush toilet paper in Costa Rica? Hey, whatever topic it is that you want to know about, hey, if you want me to do a live broadcast on it, send me an email. And so in every single video, in the description is a place where you can join the newsletter. And look, the newsletter is fun. You never, ever get uh, spam. I only send out emails to let you know uh, when the next live broadcast or something important happens. Costa Rica changed this rule, and they're not allowing any gringos in here, kicking them all out. Yeah, I'll let you know that kind of stuff. So it's important to be on that newsletter, okay? Um, hey, thank you so much. Bruce says, great info. Keep up the good work. Uh, Doug says, hey, always a good show. I really appreciate it. Uh, hey, Esquire says, how about the antennas area on flooding and outages? Now, antennas is one of those areas that uh, has, you know, it's a great place. And it is kind of up, you know, in, in hilly areas, but there are some flat areas there. They got a great big, humongous lake. However, it's one of the few areas I've not lived intentionally because I don't like to live where there's a lot of tourists, okay? Uh, if I wanted to have a lot of tourists, a lot of gringos, I'd stay in the United States. <laughs> so I wish I could answer that question for you, Esquire. However, I don't know what the uh, flooding or outage situation is over there, but I have been in so, so many places. I can't say there is a single place that I've lived that almost every single place I've lived, water goes out a lot. Some places more regular than others. Uh, the electricity, always blinking, always flashing. So uh, I've always done this, but if you have a computer and you want to stay hooked up, 
get you a good backup, a little bitty battery backup, you know, cost about a hundred bucks. And I plug my router into that backup. I plug my computer into that backup. And whenever the electricity blinks, well, then my internet doesn't go out and I can continue to work as normal. Okay. Cause Hey, you know, for me, my income comes from working online. I am, you know, um, uh, uh Contrary to popular belief, I am not some millionaire. I'm not, <laughs> I don't know if you ever thought that or not, but I, I'm just a kid barely getting by. And so I come to Costa Rica and I make my money by working online. OK, <laughs> so, hey, uh, Lewis says, hey, get a translator and it will help you if you're if your Spanish is not great. And that's exactly what I do. I use a premium app on my phone. I think it's 10 bucks a year, maybe 20 bucks a year, but that's nothing. Uh, and it's called iTranslate. So you want to go into the app store, download iTranslate, pay for the premium version, 20 bucks, whatever it is. And so I use iTranslate all the time. You can use Google Translate for free, but Google Translate doesn't translate it very good. iTranslate does a pretty good job at it, but it's still not 100% accurate, okay? Hey, thank you so much. Doug says on a scale of one to 10, it was a 10, okay? Uh, Bruce says, quick question. Is it wise to build a house out of native hardwoods? Hey, yes and no. So you do have some uh, hardwoods that are really good and really strong hardwoods. And we're gonna be talking about that very soon because the house that we are building here, we are using some hardwoods and we'll be talking about that soon. And the hardwoods are so hard that even the, you know, the termites complain because they chip in their teeth on it. <laughs> so, so yeah, we'll be talking about that. So there are some native woods that you could use to actually build with. But you do want to keep in mind, if you are in uh, areas like here, almost all of the Costa Rican houses have a termite problem, okay? So, and I'm sure the reason they have a termite problem is that they can't afford to fumigate and all of that stuff. So if you build with wood in Costa Rica, and you're going to almost 100% have a termite problem. Where I live at, high in the elevations at 4,500 feet, there is no termite problem. And that's simply because there is no termites that high, okay? So depending on where you live at, you got to keep that kind of thing into consideration, okay? All right. Uh, Pauline says, thank you and, and, and the participants for the Education of Costa Rican session. I'm glad y'all enjoyed it, okay? Okay, uh, and look, Doug asked a great question. Says, where does one join the other chat or the members only area that's only 10 bucks a month? And in almost every one of the, uh, uh, almost every one of the, I guess what is the word I'm looking for? Almost every one of the descriptions, there is a link there. But you know what? I think I haven't been putting in them in there lately. So, hey, I'm going to give you that link right now. But you can actually go to forum.cloudforest.com and you can get that. So I'm going to put the link in here right now. And so if you go right there and you see I just put the link in the chat box, you can click on that link and that'll take you. So or you can put in forum.cloudforestchapel.com and join the members only area. It's a great place there. So I just put the link in there and uh, hey, look, it's a great place to go. And, you know, especially if you want one on one time with me, because if you ask a question there, I'm answering every single question. Other members are asking questions and it's a great way to support uh, support what I do. Hey, it's only 33 cents a day, 10 bucks a month. And it's just a way to show your appreciation for all of this great information, all of this great content. You know, it's a great way just to say thank you. OK, and I, and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. I always like to shout out. Thank folks that, you know, are members of that premium area. You know, the more people that are in there and the more that you are active, the more valuable it is for others. And it helps everybody. OK, so, yeah, that would be great. And uh, Lewis says, your channel is designed to help expats with knowledge and get the best deals and not get ripped off from the very beginning. You're absolutely right, Lewis. You know, uh, I got ripped off so much 
And uh, I, I can tell you, honestly, I was I was pissed off the first few years I was here because I got tired of getting ripped off. OK, so uh, anyway, otherwise, I probably would have started a channel sooner, but I was too mad to, to do anything about it. So anyway, <laughs> maybe that was TMI. <laughs> so anyhow, so. That gives you a little bit of input. Let me come over here to the private session. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. So uh, Steve says, great information, and he'll be able to participate more when he gets the bugs worked out of his computer system. He's trying to, to use some stuff, and his computer stuff wasn't quite working right. So <clears throat> fantastic. Hey, thanks, everybody. All right. This is your last chance. Any other last questions before we call it a day? Uh, also, look, I forgot to put in here because I usually uh, put in here, you know, that uh, I usually have this banner that goes across the bottom of my screen that, hey, if you are interested in a practically free vacation, hey, look, check the link in the description below and you could possibly apply to become an intern. Yes, I am looking for an intern and an intern that's going to learn a whole lot about the off-grid homestead, a whole lot about video and YouTube and how you can build your own YouTube channel, how you can become a YouTube celebrity, if that's what I am. <laughs> anyway, you can become a YouTuber too if you want to be an intern, okay? Anyway, that'll be in the description as well. So, uh, and also, hey, as always, hey, make sure that you like, share, comment, because at the end of this build, we are giving away a three-day Costa Rican vacation. But the only way you can win is the more you comment, the more you share, then I will be choosing a winner. When we get done building this, I'll be choosing a winner. And that winner will, whether it's a one person or a couple, will have a free three-day vacation to Costa Rica, okay? Uh, take a quick look here. And Doug says, any new or new resident law changes? You know, I haven't heard anything new on the new resident law changes. I know that I did apply here recently uh, or getting all of my paperwork together for my digital nomad visa. We're going to be hearing about the digital nomad visa and we're going to be getting an update very, very soon about all of that resident law. In other words, you'll get an answer to your question very soon because I have a great, great, great attorney. Uh, we already interviewed her on buying property in Costa Rica and going to be interviewing her as we talk about, you know, residencies, as we talk about residency uh, laws and changes and uh, incentives and all of that good stuff. So I'm glad you asked that question. OK. And, and John just asked that uh, himself. He says, are they ever going to implement the new incentive laws? I do hear that they're working on it, but. It goes back to the answer for today. It's the Pura Vida mentality. Pura Vida. Nobody's in a hurry. And in reality is that, you know, the president put the law into place, but the ones that are supposed to implement it is immigrations. And guess what? Immigrations didn't agree with the president. They didn't want him to enact it because then they would have to work more. And so they're the ones responsible for implementing it. And in their sitting on their hind, you know, that, that, so that's the reason it's not done. Okay. And, uh, Doug says, okay, I signed up. Hey, thank you, Doug. I greatly appreciate it. He signed up for the members only community. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, and Greg says he's in the queue for investor for for the in he's in the queue for the investor residency. He says visa, but I know what he's talking about. Uh, Greg says so he must have already submitted his paperwork for the investor category. And in the investor category, you have to at least you know buy a piece of property that's one hundred and fifty thousand. So he's in the process of getting your stuff done. That is really great. Uh, Great, great, great. And of course, you know, Greg says, you are a YouTube personality. Well, I guess I am. I guess everybody has some personality. I don't know if it's good or bad. <laughs> Maybe it's a, you're a YouTube bad personality. Who knows? So anyway, fantastic. All right. Hey, fantastic. Hey, we've been on just a little over an hour. I hope you have enjoyed it. I'm so glad that you joined me, Steve. So glad that you've joined me live today and some of the others that joined live today and left. So thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. Hey, join my newsletter. Tell me 
What are we going to be talking about next Sunday on our live broadcast as we figure out and we learn more about living in Costa Rica? <laughs>